My project is sustainable textile manufacture or bicycle powered loom. So to start with, um, I think a quick explanation of what a loom is would probably be good. A loom is a device used for interlacing two sets of um, yarns called the wharf yarn and the weft yarn. You can see um, right here. <laughs> Yeah, there's, 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 you know, there's one yarn going one direction, one yarn going the other. And the big thing about the loom is you have to, um, it's mostly just a device for holding one set of yarns taut while you interweave the other yarn. There's a whole lot of different designs of looms, ranging from um, simple boards to, um, I think the looms they use today, they use like jets of air to shoot strings across. They're really cool. <laughs> and they, wow. they're just incredibly, incredibly complex. As for why we're building a loom, at Woman. Well, the biggest reason, as this is sustainability, project class is sustainability. Since um, we make a big deal about like providing for a lot of our own needs, like food and other things, but one area where we're still hugely reliant on factory-made goods is clothing, like this. And clearly, we're not going to be producing all of our own shirts, pants, etc., but I think it's good to at least have a way to make some warm material. And we certainly can make warm material here at Woman because we have access to um, this llama farm with a herd of like 50 llamas, which is not using them. They throw away their wool. It's a shame. It's horrible. And llama fur is the coolest. It's lanolin free. If you want to make beautiful artwork, hand are the way to go, but sometimes it is nice to be able to just produce a lot of clothing. So the reason I asked for Paul's jacket is because this is a pretty good example of what I could potentially make with this. It's a really rough hewn sort of a thing. Um, the yarns are not like factory perfect. And the spacing is around 12 to 11 um, lines per inch, which is pretty much what's on this. So actually, um, I ran the measurements on this for making this cloth, and I think it would take about, um, I think it would take a length from like here to here or something, but I haven't actually gotten, gotten to making the cloth yet. Hopefully, um, I think largely for the making of the cloth and the really getting, getting the production up and going, <coughs> I'm hoping that someone maybe in another semester will take on that project. And the big thing about open source technology is really being able to um, have technology that people can use, can understand, and can make. Because the thing is, um, with the huge, huge looms that are in like factory-made models, that means that the, these companies are owning not only the means of production of clothing, but also the means of production of the means of production. Since you can't really make some, like, some Airjet 3000 thing just with tools laying around. And that's sort of an issue, since it means that we're relying completely on these just huge conglomerates for all of our textiles, which isn't super great all the time. This part, this part, and this part are from a loom that we had here. I think, actually, if you were someone else trying to make this, um, you probably could track down some parts like this, or I think I might release plans for um, how to make your own. So a big part of this is, I'm hoping, not yet, I'd like to clean up the design a little bit more, but eventually I'd like to release the plan. So it's really something that anyone who has some, I guess, some woodworking ex experience and some time and some, yeah, just tools and equipment can make their own loom, which is wonderful. Mechanical looms in design are actually really, really similar to hand looms. There's three main motions. There's the, um, so I think, yeah, so the, these are right here. These are called the warp yarns, and the ones that go across to the weft. So the first motion is raising and lowering these yarns. And um, that's why you have these two things. These are called heddles, and they have um, heeled frames, actually, and the little things inside are heddles. And the yarns go one will go through this one, one will go through this one, one will go through this one, one will go through this one. So that as these raise and lower, it raises and lowers every other string and it creates a space in between them. I'm right now I haven't hooked up to the bicycle, it's not easier to use if I don't. But anyway, so yeah, you can see these raising and lowering. It creates this little space for the yarn to be passed through. The second motion is um, sending the, the weft yarn, I remember it because it goes from weft to white, through the space. <laughs> and what does that is called um, a shuttle. And the shuttle, well I think I should explain shuttles probably. Right here I have three shuttles. This is a shuttle for a traditional hand loom. And what you do with this is you pass it from side to side with your hands. So you would pass it, pedal, pass it, pedal, <coughs> pass it, pedal. Um, I think I'll pass this around. And then what you have here are two um, shuttles that are made for the mechanical loom. 
This one, it was sort of a first attempt um, using a lot closer to that design. It has a little spool inside that you'd fill a thread, and it would spin as you go across. Um, I don't, so I'm supposed to not get too much into design because I could talk forever, <laughs> but this just, in passing it across, this just spins too fast. It doesn't work super well. So I made the second one, um, which works much better. And the yarn on this one is drawn directly off of this, so it's a much more continuous operation, and it's fed through this little head thing. I don't have, um, oh yeah, also I probably should explain, this is the equipment that we have for making the first two steps of processing wool. That's another thing that I can talk about um, for a long time, but I will not right now. <laughs> if you have questions, definitely come up and ask me later. But anyway, this is something that I spun. It's not super good, but it is. Um, it can demonstrate just how this feeding mechanism works. You just go through here, pull it to the side, and then there's a little U-turn inside, so you can just pull it through. But it'll pass straight through this to the other side. And then you'll, um, you'll, um, these things will go down, and, let's see, and it'll trap the yarn in between them. So with each successive raising and lowering, the newly laid string is trapped, and then it's ready for the other one. So there's a lot of different solutions. Um, the one that I'm using right now is sort of this, what I call a shuttle hammer. And that sort of just sends it across, um, so to arrange it here. <laughs> so these things you depress. I didn't press it hard enough there. Anyway, um, yeah, those things you depress and it sends it right across. There's a couple different ways. I think, as I said, um, all the big production models now use jets of air or water to send it flying across. One actually has like a whole lot of shuttles and they use it like it's like a projectile system. Like it'll shoot one across and then it'll be carried to the side, it'll just keep shooting one after another across. There's some really bizarre designs out there. But anyway, I'm using a fairly simple, just, um, yeah. So this is the um, one bit that it really differs substantially from hand loom. The other two motions, this and this, are really easy to make just with pistons. You can see um, right here. So one operation that isn't mechanized is the, um, the changing of the spool. That'll have to be done periodically. There's this little thing that comes out. Um, you'll, I'd have, I'm going to make like several of these, probably like 10 or so, and you can just have a basket of them pre-wound, and for winding, I think there's a whole bunch of ways you can do that, I think some people make an attachment for like an egg beater to just wind them real quickly, so the one, the one thing that the person will have to do aside from pedaling is change these, which will have to be done I think every like two or three minutes, but other than that, yeah, mechanized. Um, also, yeah, bicycle power, big thing. I know bicycle power gets like... Often when anything's bicycle powered, bicycle power is like the big word around it, but honestly, bicycle power is the easiest part of this. <laughs> Anything, I mean, bicycle power is just, in an application like this, where you just have a really small machine that you're okay with just using um, manpower, bicycle power just is the only way that makes sense. Um, it would be a pain to hook up a motor. We don't really have, like, water near here, running water. So yeah, bicycle power, big deal. Yeah. That would be that would be Jacob cutting me out. <laughs> <laughs>